This Japanese commercial reported on the recent death of the actor who was featured within it. As the commercial aired and played on TV to the public. And not only that, they completely censored out his face. The end result is not only jarring, but also pretty scary. Online users in Japan remember it vividly for this reason. So, why did they do this? The way Japan handles the public image and creative works of a celebrity following their passing differs greatly from how Western cultures typically do. What I mean by that is Japan tends to wipe the celebrity from the public eye, whereas America or other Western countries tend to showcase them and profit off of their works. The topic of today's video is a famous Japanese urban legend with a bizarre instance of this, involving a pickle commercial of all things. Today's topic is the Sukemonoya obituary commercial. Today's video was brought to you by Private Internet Access VPN. I'm willing to assume that many of you out there are fans of obscure Japanese media. These types of media can be somewhat difficult to obtain if you're, you know, not physically in Japan. Luckily, we live in an age where Japanese media can be accessible literally at your fingertips with the use of PIA VPN. Now, to those unfamiliar, VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. They basically protect your IP address and personal data while allowing you to appear as though you're in another country entirely. This makes way for a plethora of benefits you wouldn't have without PIA VPN. Think of it this way. Watching Netflix without PIA is like paying for a three-course meal, but you can only order from the kids' menu. So, what does PIA VPN provide that sets them apart from the rest of the services out there? Well, speaking for myself personally, it's easy to use. Turning it on and off takes literal seconds. It's literally that simple. You can use one private internet access subscription to protect an unlimited amount of devices at the same time. This includes phones and game consoles. By changing my geolocation to Japan, I've been personally enjoying Japan-exclusive programming through web pages of TV networks like Fuji TV and TV Tokyo. One show in particular I've been really liking is the long-running mystery series Yoni mo Kimyo na Monogatari. By clicking my link in the description, you can get 83% off on private internet access. That's just $2.03 a month. And you get four extra months completely for free. Our story tentatively begins in 2010 on Japanese social media platform Mixi. It was on Mixi itself, or rather a thread on Mixi, where a user shared a childhood memory that irked them to that day, one they still found pretty scary. Discovered this from a Mixi topic. Incidentally, I have a vague recollection from my childhood of an eerie commercial for a pickle shop with the subtitle this man's name passed away the other day due to cause of death. Displayed below a man speaking from the screen. The commercial was edited to hide the man's face and show only his hand. And eventually, the man's voiceover disappeared, replaced by another man's voice, and the commercial itself went off the air. It seems that this commercial once featured the likeness of this actor. But that likeness was now censored as much as possible from the commercial following their death. Even the actor's own voice was dubbed over eventually, scrubbing away as much as possible of anything that resembled or belonged to the deceased actor. Naturally, others were intrigued. Some even recalled seeing the advertisement themselves when it aired. A few questions began to emerge with this initial post. Who was the actor who died? What specific brand was the commercial advertising for? There's also the basic question of when exactly? What year did this variant of the commercial air, and when did it stop being shown? When was it inevitably replaced with that dubbed version? There was also the mystery of whether or not this advertisement was local or broadcasted throughout Japan as a whole. Following the initial buzz on Mixi, online interest migrated to other sites, most notably Tuchan. If this is true, it would have gone through three edits. A commercial shown during and after 
going through three edits would be amazing. I mean, commercials for pickle shops themselves are rare, and the only two that run nationwide ads are Fuchiko and Tokai Pickling. There's a chance this commercial was local. If they can't just make a new ad, especially after the performer dies, the company itself can't be that big. That bit about the pickle shop has had me thinking. It's a unique detail, right? Shouldn't this be a bigger part of the investigation itself? I'm sure more theories will come in, like what happened with Hitogata, but first I want to ask people if they remember a pickle commercial specifically. Reminds me of a commercial I've seen. It said something like, This concert would have a different conductor due to the death of the plant conductor. Oh, that one was found and put on Nico Nico. By the way, it was local to Miyagi. These edits you mentioned, they're eerily similar to Sunskip, don't you think? And from here, speculation only continued. Somebody even created a recreation video of Sukemonoya at one point. It was at this point in time when online users began brainstorming possible theories, and two fairly popular theories have emerged, these two being the Arihiro Fujimura theory and the Kyu Sakamoto theory. Let's begin with the latter. Kyu Sakamoto was a well-known musical artist in Japan, even garnering Western fame for his song Ue o Muete no Aruko under its localized title of Sukiyaki. And while Sukiyaki is a Japanese dish, the song itself has nothing to do with it, by the way. Sakamoto was born Hisashi Sakamoto in 1941 within Kawasaki City. He was active in the entertainment industry from 1958 up until his 1985 passing. And while primarily known for his music, Sakamoto had amassed a great deal of television appearances over the years as well. Sakamoto's passing was unexpected and part of a massive tragedy. In 1985, he was among those aboard Japan Airlines Flight 123, known today as the deadliest single aircraft incident in the history of aviation. He left behind his wife and two daughters. Now, Kyu Sakamoto was in pickling-related commercials during his career, most notably for a company known as Tokai Pickling during the 1980s. Due to the timing of the Tokai Pickling advertisements, as well as his sudden and unexpected passing, he is a candidate for the obituary commercial. Next, there's Arihiro Fujimura. Born within Chioda, a ward of Tokyo, in 1934, Fujimura was both an actor as well as voice actor. His acting credits are extensive, however, he's probably best known in the voice acting world for his work on Cyborg 009. Hello, everybody! Merry Christmas! He was known to have spent the majority of his life within Chioda as well as Kanda, Tokyo. These are two wards of Tokyo that are very close to each other. Arihiro Fujimura had passed away suddenly in March of 1982. During a broadcast of his radio show, Fujimura required emergency assistance and was hospitalized due to his diabetes worsening. This was a pre-existing condition that he was already diagnosed with. A couple of days later, after entering a diabetic coma, Fujimura passed away at age 48. His passing was sudden, especially since he was only in his 40s and still very active in the media at the time. Fujimura's last credited role was for a... Pickled Foods commercial. This is mentioned in his Japanese Wikipedia article. 
This tweet also mentions the final acting credit, and that he also spoke Korean and Chinese within the commercial. And also that it was aired for years following his passing, due to the commercial not featuring his face to begin with. However, there's also tweets that mention the face wasn't cropped out originally. Around the same time, or a little later, I think Arahiro Fujimura did a commercial for Sukimono Shinshin. He wears Chinese clothes and a hat and pronounces things in several languages in a fake foreign cosplay medley, such as Shin 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 in a Chinese style. This kind of fake foreign language was Arahiro Fujimura's specialty. A third, less popular theory is the local commercial theory. Because properties were reused rather than simply shooting a new commercial, it's speculated that the company being advertised for was a small local pickling shop that didn't have much funding for advertising as a big corporation would. For that reason, they simply couldn't afford reshooting a new commercial, but could perhaps afford to make some small edits, such as cropping the ad and eventually dubbing over it. Now, using a celebrity for a small local commercial is a bit unusual, but not unheard of. Perhaps it was broadcasted in a city or prefecture that the actor was from. This is why I explicitly mention where Fujimura and Sakamoto were born and raised. Due to the timing of the passing of these two celebrities, as well as the reports of eyewitnesses, the year has been narrowed down to between 1982 and 1985. However, some swear they saw this commercial on TV precisely in 1982. Key details of this search and the information that's been gathered thus far has been shared to Japan's Lost Commercial Wiki, a site known to many Japanese online users as simply The Labyrinth. This is due to the sheer volume of lost Japanese commercials and PSAs there are out there. The Sukemonoyo obituary commercial would become one of the site's most popular next to the usual suspects, such as Hitogata and Joruri. That second one, Joruri, being an online commercial that came about based on a lot of online hearsay, and it's now believed by many to be found. The ad itself is from the early 90s, talking about the dangers of street scams. That in itself wasn't too terrifying, but the puppet featured within it was kind of scary. And this isn't the only case of a scary lost Japanese commercial spread on internet rumors and the after effects of traumatizing childhood memories eventually surfacing and proving itself to be genuine. This lost commercial was just found within the past 30 days, known in Japan as the Wanted Criminals Broadcast. Online users often claim to have seen this disturbing bumper late at night as a kid. Now, an unfortunate similarity between the obituary pickle commercial and that of Hitogata is that they've both existed as mysteries on the internet for quite some time now. With the first known mention of the obituary commercial being in 2010, we don't really know if any other developments will occur. It was unlikely if any would, as Hitogata has kind of gone cold as well. But then, almost out of nowhere, a development had occurred. Shinshin, Chungoku wa de imasu to? Shinshin, zurari to Shinshin. Kyou mo ashita mo gohan ni Shinshin, tsukemono na no desu. But was this it? 
This footage was discovered very recently in only June of 2023 by Twitter user Syo Uyama, and it featured none other than Arihiro Fujimura. Here's what the Twitter user's post had to say. Shin Shin Pickles I found this version of the commercial with the actor's face cropped out. He, Fujimura, was good at reciting lines from foreign languages. He speaks Chinese briefly here, which partially matches the testimony of him speaking multiple foreign languages in the commercial. Apologies if this info is wrong or posted elsewhere already. Looks pretty similar to the descriptions I've provided, doesn't it? And in case anyone is wondering about that Chinese bit mentioned, Fujimura does use the Chinese pronunciation for Xinxin right here. Xin xin. However, regardless of all these similarities, there are some caveats. Did this specific advertisement air in the 1980s? The broadcast recorded in this video had aired way back in 1973. Various sources state this was a long-running campaign, so that part adds up. The part where Fujimura's face was cut out a whole nine years prior to his passing does not. One account did say that this commercial never featured his face to begin with, while another claimed that he wore costumes and his face was clearly visible. Maybe there were different versions of the commercial from the start. Or perhaps the ad was never changed to begin with, but the death announcement was added on screen following the actor's passing. And then the dub. So, to recap, the air date of this found commercial was well before Fujimura's death, nine years prior, and the face was already cropped out, though we have no confirmation of additional versions. This includes the 1982 obituary variant. That is, if it does exist. I do, however, know this. That the next Shin Shin Pickles commercial would not be produced until three years following Fujimura's passing. <laughs> so, my theory is this. This found commercial was likely shown between the early 1970s up until 1982 or even 1985. Though, the additional edits, that being the obituary message as well as the later dub, following between 1982 and 1985. So, as far as that eerie message and the dubbed over version, they have yet to surface. But what do you think about all this? Do you think that this ad is still out there, having nothing to do with what's been found thus far? Or do you perhaps think that the Sheen Sheen Pickles commercial is the lost commercial in all its glory? Let me know in the comments. Further discussion and brainstorming is what helps these searches along, after all. As far as the opinions of those in Japan, many are convinced that the Sheen Sheen Pickles commercial is the advertisement that was lost. Though, nothing has been definitively confirmed. Not yet, at least. Hey guys, welcome to this edition of the Patreon shoutout, uh, shoutouts? Anywho, a huge massive thank you to Carlos D. Stevens, Riley Cummings, Everlurker1999, Creepy Leany, Vector Graphics, Bill Baker, Gina Britton, Luke Brown, Pigpen, Layla Bloom, Hinsvar, Jose Santana, I think I got it right that time, Lizard Queen 27 Newt Newt Fruit Shoot, Henry Costanza, Echo Costa, Questor Otto, Angry Oyasu, Hex Maniac Hana, Chitoge, Daniel Tellez, Mars, Nova Snow, Jeremiah BLR, Dakota May, Mothic Permanence, Adela Lilith, 3223232, Theron Skymere, Chumpkins, Jaded Elf, Armando Duran, Rora Morasso, Ella S, Lena SD98, Berserker Congo 2, Ellie L, Nikki, Flo Ami, Pada, Ashley Rigby, Meek, Nicholas Babinu, Mercedes Slaughter, Beebles32, Sidnap, Eli Roca, Life on Mars, Greedy Gut78, Lilia Grasso, Metal Mario64, Courtney Von Schriltz, Misao, Dr. Money Dollar Sign Dollar Sign 69, Nicole Turkowski, Alice Rose, Akali, Anna, Sophia Gillespie, Megan Nicole, Vonnie, Mike Master, 
Judy 18, Red Hoodie 50, Felix Gonzalez, Alan Achondo, Momo Buns, Mr. Anderson, Michiro OG, Otonia, Angel Pena, Iggs, Ilio, Brandon Tran, Andrew Valencia, Eels, Dude Bro, Jolliser Plays, Beastman Manor, Merotichi, Aurora Phoenix, Lauren Marcello, Merlin Caliber, C Chameleon, Gene 187, Digital Dubs, Omar Ruedas, Coffee Red Fox, Raz Cohen, Trivan Bashi, Daniel Barrientos, Pan Fried Life Jacket Awareness, Nicholas Allen, Stagio VGM, Adam Mitchell, Joka, Anigdra J. Reese, Argua Bill, Leon X8, Theo Fulzeta, Christopher Valencia, Hilari, Erica, Justin Fura, PP Pesketag, Quetzalcoatl FC, Andrew LaPena, VHS Vich, Airfire, Grand Tactician, Good with a Stain, Kevin, Jojo, Orlon the Dog, Soko, Jordy Kirk, and Be Shonen Knife. Once again, thank you so much, guys.